So two sides of sides, the dark side and the light side. And well, they call soul not because it's bad or good. It's because one side is visible to everyone and the second side is not very visible. And uh, also the sides should have some benefits uh, and this one dark side can lead to a lot of different things. For example, we can become famous, you can become rich, and a lot of things only if you will publish. And the rest of the side is the light side, and this light side only can get you a mental disorders and dirty love codes. So this is what called the work in a laboratory, and this is work behind the computer in general. So I will talk today about a paper side of science, which is connected with different aspects, not directly connected with the book in the lab. Um, well, uh, many people here in Stump know me as a people or as a person, uh, which favorite phrase is everything was bad. So in the beginning, everything was bad. Uh, probably every one of you, uh, especially this for our first course, not many people here, <laughs> let's say. Uh, well, uh, many students from the first course probably already received uh, these topics. And, uh, well, uh, with this first topic, not everything uh, is good because you literally know nothing about this new topic. And uh, you need to know and how to solve this problem, how to understand, how to obtain the data, and so on. And uh, the first part of today's lecture will be devoted to how to find this information, where to find, and uh, what most important, what information you can trust. And so, in the beginning, everything was bad, but on the second day, you read everything. Uh, Previous year, uh, previous year, one of the group leaders proposed that after you received your project, your satisfaction with uh, this project will increase over time, uh, and literally comes to infinity probably. But uh, me, as the person who worked here for a long time, uh, I can say that this is not working like this. It's working like this. So you are probably somewhere here, uh, and your satisfaction with the projects will go up and down as you progress through it. And it's only in your power, let's say, to change the down course to up course. So your first problem is you start a digging project and realize that you have no knowledge, your uh, knowledge is not enough, you don't know where to move, and so on. So how to solve this first problem, this first issue? Uh, I propose you a mechanistic approach to problem number one. As you know, there's a lot of articles of different types, and you probably not pay close attention to what these articles is about, like type of articles. And this is well, quite important because you need to distinguish them. The first, the main type of article is just article. Let's say it's a credibly called research paper, full paper, or just paper, and depends on the type of journal. And this is a full scale research dedicated to just one scene. So some other particles devoted to something and studied, studied in different applications. So full paper can be up to 10,000 symbols long, uh, like, I don't know, 5, 10 images, and so on. The next type of articles is the communication, letter, short communication. So it's a small full paper, like 3,000 symbols, and dedicated to a topic which just appeared and you want to occupy some place among scientific community. So it's very short and very good. Uh, the second type is a review of mini review, and this is basically what we're looking for because this is a uh, let's say a uh, review about maybe a thousand. Is it in the this thousand? Okay, uh, so uh, this review is about can be up to one thousand. One thousand references 
Uh, well, uh, and uh, it also can be a meeting type of this area because there's some topics which are not really broad at all. Like, not broad, maybe just appeared uh, like COVID 19 previous year, there was not many publications and there was a lot of emails. It's also some interesting type of articles like forms highlight or even sometimes called neighborhood watch. So uh, basically published by a very famous scientist, which are aware of some other papers that not get a proper attention. So let's imagine someone published some article on a very important topic, but no one pay attention to this article. So some famous scientists uh, publish some focus, usually very short, like one page, to show that this paper is really important. I told you as a Nobel Prize winner. Uh, so, uh, letter to editor, if you are famous enough and uh, strong enough in your field, you can send a letter to editor to propose something very important. Uh, Perspective and Frontiers, it's also a very short type of publication, but about Perspective and Frontiers, a new topic. Uh, case study was very interesting. It dedicated to some well, case studies, basically in medicine. So it can be even one case, like something happened with patient, and I will publish this, so everyone will know that something can happen. Or it can be like uh, 100,000 people and a lot of cases, and published basically in medical journals like Lancet and so on. And uh, very useful, but not uh, always reproducible. It's a message and protocol style. And uh, this one dedicated to how to repeat some procedure. So, step by step, what trial to take, what action to take, where it, where it was uh, what, and so on. Of course, etc. It's a lot of other types of articles. But mechanistic approach problem number one, you need this one. You need to find a proper preview for your topic. And this is just an example from our recent uh, published paper. And the review usually provides very comprehensive insight and provides a very large amount of references, just table two for, I don't know, eight tables from this article, from this review. And you need, uh, not need to look for all of this. You need to find just one. But uh, the problem is where to find an article. I think most of you, of course, know about Google Home. But for those who don't know, never know, and so on, it's a main, uh, let's say, main site, main database where you look at for article. But not just looking, there is a lot of additional information, very useful information you can find, and not everyone pay attention to this. Uh, the first one, uh, the first issue with using Google Scholar is simple queries. So, uh, if you want to look for something, you need your query to be as simple as possible. For example, this example uh, uh, can an article be completely published? So, my aim was to find a paper where someone proved that some kind of nanoparticles can be completely harmless to people. For example, magnetite. Can be magnetite be completely harmless? So, I asked this, and well, was I right or not with this query? No. No. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a big problem with this query because there's a lot of words that not, do not need to be included here. Because I found completely harmless and care. I found other particles, other particles care. I found uh, other particles care, and so on. Uh, the main, the two main words in this way is other particles and harmless. The rest of the words are not needed. So you can just ask harmless other particles, for example. Uh, well, the second one is journal name. Journal names is very important, and you need to master your knowledge in journal names, and especially in publishers. Publishers. So, for you, especially for first year students, publishers for now are nothing. It's just some name like Elzeber, RSC, Wiley. They, uh, it's telling you nothing. Uh, here, of course, here is important because if you compare here and the number of citations, you can understand how the article is popular or not. 
So yeah, the more recent the article, the higher the number of citations, of course, the better. Article popularity, so it's again citations and also profile. Uh, some of the authors can register for uh, Google Scholar and make a profile, but not everyone has this profile. But in case they can, well, it's good. And I advise you all to have a profile on Google, it will help you in your future career. And with the articles, if you can press uh, on similar articles, one can find the similar articles. But uh, the better strategy was to press on number of citations. Because if someone cited this article, it is probably dedicated to the same topic. But, uh, well, that's how this Google profile looks like. Uh, I think everyone already knows how it looks like. Still need to show. But Google Scholar is not only a database to search. Of course, we can use the other, so we will just, just Google. But then, and oh, okay, it's very important to see, almost missing. Uh, do not forget that you can sort your articles by relevance or by date. And if you are going to uh, write your own review on recent published papers, it will be very good to sort not by relevance, it's sort by date. And you can find sometimes very recent papers which are just published, maybe it's very good journals. And do not forget to adjust the date measures. Uh, but there is also some other things that thanks to the CEO who provided this link. It's uh, not very new, but not so popular as Google Scholar, but definitely much better. Uh, called academic.microsoft.com from another IT giant Microsoft. And this is a much better version of. Google Scholar, because if we are look on this one, I started my scientific career like, like 40 years ago, and it still looks like 40 years ago. So nothing changes in this interface. And here, as you can see, you can look almost 300 million publications, same amount of courses, topics, conferences, journals, and even institutions. And what is more important for an academic, you can find uh, articles in the same way as the score, but with additional information. And also, you can sort them by some topics. And this is very useful. Why? Because for you, as a young scientist, who are not, uh, not familiar with journals, publishers, conferences, and so on, you can find a lot of valuable information. Which information? For example, top journals. So you can look, for example, I uh, asked for the same team, doesn't matter for what to ask, and the most of the papers published in Kodiwan Pekini. It's almost number one journal in Europe about kids and so on. Uh, and some of these journals, they are not very popular, let's say. Kodiwan Pekini is a very popular journal, but not an impact. Probably no one heard about it, but it's a specialized journal in the AI connected with nano safety because it's impact of nano and nano safety connected with impact of nano, something in the environment. So, this is a hint for you where to publish your research if you are going to publish something in nano safety. Uh, yet, we will reject from nano impact when we get to publish about nano safety. Trust me. Uh, and reject from the medicine and reject from the technology and probably some other journals. Uh, second thing, top institution published on uh, safety. Uh, of course, the Chinese Academy of Science, it's, I don't know, Harvard University, okay, but the top published institute is the University of St. Gale. I don't know even where, where it's located. But probably there's some group in this university which work in the field of nano safety. So if you're going to uh, work in this field, it's your potential, uh, I don't know, future career in this university. And the last one is top conferences. Where to go and where to present your let's say, research. So uh, Microsoft Academy is very useful in this way, and I uh, ask you to try it because it's uh, if. But uh, let's back to Scholar and back to Publisher. So what 
is publisher and why it is so important. Uh, the first thing is uh, what the Hella publisher is, because uh, for now you have normally listen about them and there's a lot of them. It's just maybe 10 of them, but there's dozens of these publishers. And uh, many of these publishers they distinguish it by some features. For example, Elzebra, I first went very like a low mode consider, but Elzebra is very slow. Uh, it is normal when you have your publication re revised over two months, three months, it's okay for Elzebra. The same for Springer, uh, but for MTPI, uh, it's not two months, it's two days. And as you can see, it's not a local from Dependent, of course. But uh, currently, Dependent got in some problems because there was an article published by some researchers in a very good journal, Research Foundation. And uh, NDPI considered as a predatory publisher and predatory journals. So they hunt for articles. And uh, I personally have like three or four emails every day from NDPI journals. Uh, publish with us, publish with us. But uh, every publication here, it's like $2,000. And because of this, uh, and because of very poor revision courses, uh, journals of the kind publisher considered as trash journals or predatory journals. So if you found some article from NDPI or you want to publish the NDPI, try to avoid it. It doesn't matter. I personally have some articles in NDPI, but I do my best to do these articles. Not everyone do the same. So please be aware of this publisher and, well, if you can, try to avoid it. Uh, of course, it's nature publishing group where we all want to go or to publish. It's like science group and so on. But uh, okay, publisher distinguished by some features. But what about papers? Uh, not paper journals. It's an uh, enormous amount of journals inside single publisher. So it can be up to like the wine library. It's almost three thousand different journals only in wine. And I don't just know if everyone, I know maybe a dozen of the journals. And how to understand what journal to trust, what journal to publish, how to find these journals, and so on. Because it's very important for you, especially as young scientists, because energy, environmental science, chemical, who can form about chemical science, all their chemistry, well, common names. Uh, so, what you need to do is proceed to a very useful source called SGR. So, signature.com journal ranking. What is this source? Uh, this source is developed by a laboratory called uh, SignMigro, and this is a product of Scopus database. I will talk about this later. And SGR is just the number, as you can see here. What this number means? So, it's a journal name, like Nature Review Materials, Small Bio Materials. It's a main journal in material science. It's our topic for most of us, and bio materials. So, uh, what is journal means? It means, for example, 32. Uh, in previous year, every article published during the last three years was published 32 times. So, for the last three years, there was published a lot of articles. And in, for example, the previous year, every of these articles was published, uh, cited 32 times. So, if, uh, for example, here this count would be for each chart one. It means that every single article published during the last three years in this journal was cited at least one. And this is a very good result. It means there was uh, there were no unsighted articles. And 32 is enormous. It means, well, just enormous. You see the difference between first and second place, and even first and fifth place. Uh, what we also can obtain from this chart. So the, better, uh, the higher, the better. It's a measure of journal quality. The second one, which we can obtain from this chart, is well, brief overview about uh, subject area, about publisher, 
some links to a home page, how to publish in this journal, uh, and short description about, about this journal. But what important is, uh, is following information. For you now, it looks like I don't need to know everything about the quarters, about similar journals. You need, trust me. Already in April, when you will need to submit, at least try to submit your first paper, you will need to know everything about this, and especially for terms, because this information is required by foundation, uh, foundations uh, like uh, Russian Scientific Foundation, because you need to provide this information, like what quartiles your article is. Uh, it's a four quartiles, Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. And green means Q1, uh, yellow means Q2, and the rest doesn't matter. Uh, we gain only for Q1 journals. Uh, if article in Q1, at least in one category, it's in Q1. Doesn't matter Q2, Q3, 1 and Q1, the whole journal in Q1. And, well, you need to know this information. Find similar journals. Uh, don't say if you submit to the first journal, uh, it will accept you. So you will probably resubmit a multiple times. And to ease this process, you can go to this journal, find the first journal you submitted your article in, and find a similar journals. Open the same pages, analyze its uh, statistics, and so on. Uh, but for the next, a lot of plots, for now, most of them. Uh, means nothing for you, but it's a dynamic of this chart, dynamic of total documents published, dynamic of citations to the document, and so on. As you can see, this chart increasing and slightly decreasing, like this. Why? Because it's related to a new journal. It only started like four years ago, and amount of total documents increased in 2020, so amount of documents increased, amount of citations to the document decreased. So it's okay. And uh, this one is also very important uh, plot because it's not this jar. This jar is like uh, a bit a bit better measure of journal quality, of journal impact, because the previous measure was impact factor. And this is basically impact factor just for citations per document. But uh, what else about uh, journal statistics? Some journals are easy and some journals are not. As you can see, this probably another, some another, another technology or something like this one. And this journal is constantly decreasing for the last, I don't know, 10 years. So if you're going to publish here, you should be ready that this journal will go down from P1 to P2, and your article will become P2, and you will lose some positions because, again, in Russia Scientific Foundation, Q1 articles counted as two articles. Q2 article counted as one article. So you just lose one, one article, uh, only because journal Drop it down from first quarter to second. And well, okay, about the fact factor. What is the fact factor? The fact factor can be found uh, in every journal on the page like about overview, about tasks, like this one. And the fact factor is very similar to SGR, it's just a citation divided by papers in the year minus one, and the fact factor for this year. So, impact factor can be three year, five year impact factor, and it's just the amount of citations divided by papers for the rest of five or three years. And uh, it means that, for example, for nature review materials, there is no five year impact factor because it's only uh, well, four years to the journal. So, we wait next year to update and five years impact factor. And, well, it's an important measure of the journal. Uh, important method, journal models. Uh, okay, uh, but what about other databases? So you can find this jar, you can find the impact factor, and so on. But there's also some other measures that uh, will be required for you to provide to different, uh, again, foundation, foundations, grants, because uh, you will be uh, frequently asked, is this paper, is this journal, uh, 
cited uh, included in the Scopus database or in the Web of Science database and what, what that makes and the problem. So, Scopus database, scopus.com, and what is this? It's just a database of researchers, of journals, and so on, and only very good journals included in Scopus. So, if a journal included in Scopus, probably it's a good journal, but not always. Not always. Many of the Russian journals not included in Scopus, for example. Uh, well, only international. Basically, most of the international journals included, national journals not. But there's also, of course, some uh, exceptions from this. Uh, and what's special about this one? Now, I mentioned about your own profile at Google Scholar, which should be created by you. In Scopus, your profile generated, well, national doesn't matter, generated automatically. So every scientist in the world will have a Scopus profile. Maybe the Scopus profile will be not very accurate, like your working place, like your occupation, and so on. But in general, it will include most of, the, of your articles if you do not change your name. It's very sensitive to uh, family name, to surname, and so on. Uh, and, well, if you need to find some information about scientists, you will probably need to go to Scopus and find this profile because it will be, of, uh, in any case, it will be great. Uh, you also can find some articles. Uh, here I asked again for another safety and I uh, found some articles and you can sort them by, for example, here again by open access and so on. So it's very similar to academic, but uh, you can find this one very important information again, which you need to apply for money if you need a Scopus article ID which is called YEIT. And this YEIT can be found only in the URL address of the article, starting after equal sign, ending, I don't remember how this sign is called. Who remember? Well, okay, so this one is Scopus article ID, which you need to provide for Russian scientific foundation to get money. Uh, so remember where to find it in a URL address. Uh, the next one, Web of Science database. Uh, web of Science uh, URL address webofknowledge.com is another database with papers. And this one a bit over high, uh, high quality compared to Scopus. So if some journal included in Scopus, it can be not included in Web of Science. Again, very, very same, non safety, some reports, some uh, references, citations, uh, software here, and so on. Uh, and, well, also very important, it's a web of science ID of your paper, which can be found if you scroll down, press additional information, and this post number of your paper is also very important. You need to know where to find it because it will save your time. But Rins database, it's our pure Russian database called Russian Index of Scientific Citations. Why is this important? Well, because we live in Russia, we need to have our own database. And you need to sign up here as well as to post database and as well as focus database. You need to create your own profile and claim this profile because I don't know if this matches somewhere, but well, I claimed my profile and I can edit my profile. If you are claimed, you can. So, what you can find in the INS database? In the INS database, you can put your surname here and found a lot of scientists with the same surnames. And if you press on this small histogram here, you will find a very detailed information about you, and there's also some very important number, just one. This is called percentile or something like this. Why is this important? Because it required by our authorities, like Minister of Higher Education and so on, 
What's your percentile? It doesn't matter what's your name, what's your journal, what's your what's your percentile. And this percentile means that I it's my profile. I'm top uh, seven percent of scientists in biology in Russia. So, uh, so the lower the better. Percentile one means you are in top one percent. So you need to see that here. You need to organize your profile. You need to manually, maybe, maybe, manually add your articles to the profile to get the proper information. So it's uh, very important if you will stay here in Russia and progress in your future scientific career. Uh, again, I think many of you, some of you at least, played Warcraft as boss. <laughs> so you can now obtain your own org ID. <laughs> uh, probably it's not org ID or stick, but still uh, it's ID. Again, again ID. By the way, by the way, you will get your own ID in Scopus. It's a Scopus also ID. You will get your own ID in Web of Science. It's called Research ID, which you obtain through different resources called Pavlots. And you need this ID again for funding to apply for grants. You need this ID. And this is the most important one among all of them, because this pocket ID is provided close to your surname in every uh, publisher article. So most of the journals now are required to provide you your own ID or seat and matter. Your ID, because it will be in a small green circle near your surname in almost every journal. In some journals are even mandatory to provide OK ID. So, uh, register here, there's some information about the dedication, the current employment, membership, funding, uh, your works. So, you need to organize these keywords and all of this one. Uh, well, what else? Lens database. It's a lot of databases you need to know about because lens database is about patent search. And if you're going to work in industrial lab, maybe or something connected with something we will want to practice, you need to know whether to let it patented or not. In some cases, uh, a bit challenging to understand. But still, uh, this database is very similar to Google Patent, but but a bit better. So just remember this. Let's walk. Okay, let's go. Now you understand what journals to trust, which publisher to trust, you know what is this journal, what is focus, uh, web of science, and so on. And you finally found back to the issue number one. If you remember, you need to find some review to uh, boost your knowledge. You found a journal publisher review, you try to download. And you need to pay. Uh, well, currently the situation much better than it was even five years ago because it won't have uh, access to most of the publisher journals. And when you're here, you can uh, download most of the papers for free through the library of Pitmo University. In some cases, you can even log in from uh, use your uh, email of like your surname, uh, itmo.co.ru. You can log in from your host, uh, it will access to some databases, but not always, but you can try. But in case you don't need to log in through the library, library and so on, you can go to the help. Of one person. <laughs> Welcome, <laughs> Alexander. <laughs> so, probably everyone knows this one, but still, I need to mention, of course, it's a side hub. Now it's available at sidehub.ru. Not soon, not too, not everything else, just true. But still, but from it more as I know, but you can access from your phone. And you need to put this uh, just the uh, doing inside the uh, query and uh, find an article. So, very, very easy. Did you live in the I don't know exactly, but at least some uh, code 
the sign that is dead is that it can be with this domain, so probably half, half legal. Uh, well, you put this one in this one, and you are wonderful, and so, oh, again, yeah, it's me again. Uh, if you cannot find something here, it can be a chance, just a chance, that if you will go to a search gate and ask the author of the publication personally to provide the article, he or she will send this article to you directly. So sign up for a survey gate because it's like kind of social network for scientists. There's a lot of information about where you're from, what you're specialist in, uh, what you're working, how you work, and what you publish, and so on. You can ask questions, you can communicate with other people, and the search gate is a uh, well, nice place to discuss some scientific connected things. Thank you. <laughs> No, we have time. Uh, where are you on this curve? I'm personally here. Uh, well, both, both sides are good. It's good to know and good to know that you don't know. But you found a review, it's very big, it's thousands of references, it's 50 pages. And you have a scholarship in less than one week, and you need to proceed with your reading and your level English A0, let's say. Uh, where to look for the useful information in the review? Of course, you don't need to read it all, a whole paper. It's, it's just not even a spend of time, it's a waste of time. Highlights. Very nice to read some highlights to understand what is A B part. It's just a bullet points, very, very short keynotes. And most of the readers have some highlights, but it's just not so much information from them. So you need to go scroll down, scroll down, scroll down to the very bottom of the news because you need to solve problem. You always need to remember that you are here to solve the problem. You don't know how to proceed further. And conclusions will tell you what is already done and more important, what will be done, what needs to be done in the future. And you are here because you need to do something. And it's take and do future directions. Uh, in case it's not enough, you can go, you can go to some tables in very good areas, like ours. We have a table. Plus table, table eight, with summary, which summarizes all of the review, all of the study pages in just one table. So look for this table, it will help to uh, save your time. But uh, if you're going, for example, to find some information about magnetotoxicity and we need a specialist, especially magnetotoxicity on endothelial cells. You don't need to read a whole review of 30 pages because we have like only three citations in a special section. So you need to proceed just to the special section and you don't need to read the whole review. No point in this one. Well, okay, you found the review, you read the review, you solved your problem. Okay, everything is nice. You found a narrow topic to start with, and this topic is contrary to the laws of physics. Because of this, it's a problem, it's a confusion, directions, maybe in your physics and so on. How to solve a second problem? Well, second problem, you need a very specific, a very specific approach because every is something very wide and you need something more narrow, like the topic. And you need to go to papers. Just a full paper. Full paper is usually dedicated to some very narrow information, and conclusions of this paper is usually more specific. So we already know how to find a paper. We found this paper, okay? Where is this information in paper? Again, it's not necessary to read the whole paper because it can be quite big. Title, authors, and affiliation. Uh, why is this so important? I think most of you even don't read this author's title. Why not read this? Because it's important to learn from our courses or the results. 
I don't want to be a root of hash, but if paper published in Malaysia, Iran, Brazil, Turkey, or China, you should not, well, not, you should trust it, but with some cautious. Because, well, experience says that most of the papers published in some of these, not only these countries, can be fully trusted. And, well, it's a lot of examples of this. Uh, if paper published in USA, in Canada, and I don't know, in Europe, even in Singapore, you probably can trust it, but caution is uh, everything, and you need to be cautious every time because nine out of ten articles can be repeated. Trust me, it's just the problem of repeatability uh, in all the types of sciences. So, okay, it's important, and I will show you an example a bit further. Second one, yeah, I can move 50, yeah, so you need to read abstract because. The most of the information you need is an expert. Why are results important and what are they? So everything is made and dedicated, as you already see, to the results. And you need the single result for you to proceed with your research. Introduction is also very useful because it's previous results versus our results. So it's some kind of short review and it's Sometimes it's nice to read this short review and you know, enhance your knowledge. Materials and methods. Ooh, how to obtain results? Why is this so important and why you need to read the methods? Well, it's boring, of course, to read these methods and materials and so on. But if you aim to repeat something from this paper, you don't need to read these, these, you don't need to read anything. You need to read methods. Because if you don't have equipment and measures, you cannot repeat. There is no point to read the rest of the articles if you cannot repeat because you don't have foundation. Uh, results. Well, results. Uh, usually, currently, there is not much journals with a division of results and discussion. Usually, just results and discussion. And pay attention. It's a lot of results. But just one discussion. It's uh, very important uh, when you will write your own article and conclusions. Also, it's multiple conclusions, not just one conclusion. So, results and total results. We obtained this, it was nine, and well, it was nine. Okay. But next, what is nine means? What is phenomenon means? And so on. So, discussions, discussion, what results mean? Conclusion, the second part you need to read after abstract. So you read abstract, you found this article on bottoms, then you proceed to conclusions. Short results and plan for future results. Uh, plan for future results not only for the authors of this article, but also for you. Take this future plan, go to the lab, and very fast make your own model practice. <laughs> Acknowledgements. Uh, who give money to obtain results? It's not very important for you to know who give money for some, some other researchers' results. But for you as a researcher, it's maybe the most important part of your article. Because if you mess this up and put a wrong number of your foundation grant, it's a lot of problems, trust me. It's so many problems that you will remember this for the rest of your life. So pay very close attention to the number grant you want to mention here. I will tell about how, public, how to publish and prepare papers in the second lecture next week. So references, links to other people results. So sometimes it's nice to, see, to find some very Interesting references, I think this reference by something interesting. Uh, but let's proceed with rough analysis of the article. Of course, to make a rough analysis, you need a bit of experience at, at home and as a scientist. But anyway, already on your stage of development as a scientist, you can make some rough analysis. So, title and abstract. 
It's an example from previous year because previous year was very similar lecture, but not as funny as now. Yes, <laughs> today much better than previous year. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So first, Elzira publisher. Well, we have trusted. Very good publisher. Okay. Journal of Drug Delivery Science and Technology. What's wrong with this title? No? Too long. Too long. <laughs> it's a direct correlation between the uh, number of words in the title of the journal and the quality of the journal. The longer the words. Uh, in this case, the impact factor of GDDCT, like maybe four, three, something like this one. Not very bad, not very good. Uh, title. Title is pure experimental article. It has some bodies, some particles, four, something, la 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 la. Press it next. Here, 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 here. Okay. So you already should be alerted a bit that this paper, not very good journal, probably not very good university or lab or so on, but what we can say that this is a relatively famous researcher in this area. Uh, okay, you decided, okay, I agree with not very good journal, not very good university, I agree, I want to pursue it. Abstract. Uh, first glance on this abstract, and you don't need to read article at all. All information already here. If you want to solve some problems with delivery of something using PLG, for example, and particles, Everything you need here in three numbers size, charge, load, and efficiency. You don't need anything except these numbers. So, for me, as an experienced researcher, I just read this abstract and I got all information I need. I don't need to read like 12 papers or so on. But you're not so experienced. Let's assume this and you want to proceed. Further with your idea. What's wrong with the F cluster? Yeah, yeah. We have some picture from scanning electron microscope. We will see it in a large format, but it's like some photo, it's some unedited picture, and so on plus GDCTT, plus this, and you... Hmm. But you decided to proceed. Okay, introduction. What you can find in introduction? Well, introduction usually is uh, the most easiest part to write. And, well, it's very hard to make something bad in the introduction. It's about some bullets, it's part about the uh, TPA, it's tissue plasminogen, uh, plasminogen activated main drug, it's about polymer careers and a short results, let's say. So it's nice to read, it's easy to read, and so on. Okay, everything with the introduction. Methods. If you are able to repeat, as I say, something from this article, you need to go to materials. It's a first section of methods usually. And you need to briefly check do you have everything of this in your lab? Because if you have don't have something, you will close and search for another next. For example, pigeonation is a process of covering your particles with pet molecules. So, so uh, it's like take PLG, take EDC, NHS, uh, NHS, it's uh, relatively common reagents. Uh, this area is mechanically steered, I spoke Tensanol, okay, 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 okay. Okay, and here's PEX 3000 with NH2 groups. It's not very common, and we don't have this one in lab. And from my experience, it can be ordered from PEG Works in USA, and they will not solve it to you in Russia because we are the sanctions. So don't try to import it from PEG Works. And this is the problem. If you need this, you need to wait like three months six months and so on and if you want to proceed with this protocol well your work is postponed by half a year so it's not an option 
In case you have this one, you need proceed further, for example, okay, back to chili, then freeze Okay, it's just a small, small, small phrase, freeze dry. But if you don't have a freeze dryer, then you have. Well, it's a problem how to freeze dry without the freeze dryer. So if you have, okay, you can proceed with this protocol and so on. Uh, what else information you can find in methods? Well, you can just briefly scroll through these methods and find what you're interested in. For example, inventory list, subculture, so on. Just for you to understand what article is about, you can just open this uh, list and read for the points. Next, the last discussion. As I said, you don't need to read the whole article because there's no point to read this article. You need to be on, remember this curve, yeah, like you like 140, if you need to read for figures like comics. First one, uh, why is this important? I will explain. What this process is about? What is this cut here? Combination of some owners, uh, then uh, we. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, I read what, what uh, in the picture itself, the reaction that uh, since. Uh, the figure uh, summary is not uh, about this on the picture because it's not a full, the full uh, describe, full describe of the yeah. reaction to the place. But is this a full reaction? I do not know, so I'm sorry. Well, no, okay, it's, a, it's, it's very common. It's so basic reaction that if we place this as the number of one figure, your process level as a researcher is very low because it's like a I don't know school program school program for scientists. So if someone puts this one in figure, not a supplementary figure, first figure of your paper, it's a bad quality of the whole article and you as a researcher. So you don't know the basics. And well, it's a game plus GDCT plus plus this one, okay. We proceed anyway. Figure one, figure two. Calibration curve. Who in the world plays calibration curve as a figure two? If it is the best case, you can place the supplementary information. In most of the cases, you just place it in your trash can after you perform all the experiments. So, okay, calibration curve at least. Uh, 0.95 correlation versus so nice correlation of figure number two. Next, well, again, again, some infrared spectroscopy of common common regions like PMG. Uh, anyway, it need to be done because you need to prove your conjugation with the uh, pattern with PMG. But okay, it's okay with this way. Here, one of the best one here. Why is this important? About what, what is this important? It's from a collection, by the way. So it's already, uh, just remember this, it's, it is bad to put something from your article, like figure number four or five in your collection. So that collection should be completely different from the pictures you put in your main text. It should be a completely different picture. So what's wrong with this? Uh, well, this is the type of microscope, like mirror screen. Uh, it's a really beautiful picture of one like a scale, so it's uh, the world of pictures. Yeah, microscope is very good, very much better than we have in start, but it should be cut off because we don't need this information, it can be provided in the figure capture. And this is a built in, uh, built, built in feature in Microsoft in software, so well. It's okay. What else wrong with this picture? Is the circle is dirty, I suppose, since uh, there are some particles and there's some something <laughs> I do not know. Uh, so there are a lot of byproducts by there are by some spectrum, there's no description. Since I believe that the particles are uh, captured with uh, this lines, but all of other stuff is just byproducts of this. 
Yes, the quality, the quality of the picture not very good, but there's some other problem with this picture and the whole research. The whole research. Can we tell us? Oh. Date. Okay. <laughs> what the date of the article? Yeah. It's a fuck up. It's a fuck up, yes. Because it means that this picture was obtained like three years ago. It was in trash camp for three years and now they published it. It's like a last nail in the in your coffin. I don't know how to be in English, but it's just a bad research. Let us use this. But we decided to proceed anyway. It's like thrombolysis activity of TPA, does not matter activity of what and so on. What's wrong here? Yeah. What's wrong with standard deviations? Why small here, 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 and so on? The uh, whole course of the curve is okay, but well. I think if we consider errors, the full line could be just in any form. Yeah. It could, be it could, it could be of any form from 30 to 10. Like, this, uh, this line means almost nothing. So there's no information in this graph. Well, relatively. Everything is good, it's all viability. I don't know, I don't know for some purpose. Positive control have lower cell viability than expensive. <laughs> I don't know, maybe they calculated by some, some reverse engineering, I don't know, but still. And some examples of how this is working, how the thrombus is dissolved, some pictures. Well, not many information, but there's some plots, and this is a uh, only figure that you need to assess the efficiency of the whole article. So again, you don't need to read, we didn't read anything, we just saw some pictures. And you need to, uh, you can scroll down, down to figure nine, and look, uh, plain TPA, plain is not a good term, it's not, uh, only TPA. You can uh, pay a close attention when you say in Russian, чистый фермент, you don't need to translate it as a pure, because pure means that there is no impurities. In this case, it already assumed that this is pure, so you need to use a term only to be not a plane. What plane? Plane? Plane is like right. plane. Uh, so it's a bit problems with English. You can, but well, it's around what, what to ask. But uh, it's like seven, and this is like. 20, 7, 20. Well, at least four, four, five times increase by this one. And this is only information we need from this paper. It's increased like four times. Okay, well, everything is done. So it's a rough analysis of the article, uh, which you need to make to proceed with some problems with your research if you need to solve some. But, for example, it's a lot of different things like TPA, PHA, PEP, and so on. And SATA say, even I don't know what SATA say. But where to find information about all of this? How you need to know? Of course, you can proceed to Wikipedia and uh, ask PLJ and so on. But it's more scientific resources. Another the nature of all. Uh, it's a very big database. Very enormous in that place. I don't know, like maybe millions, again, 300 million uh, results. And you can put some, uh, not a query, not like a, not a safety or another technology. You can place here some properties, some compounds, everything you want. Like I put here only for big protein because I was interested, it's not how group. And I found some papers, not very large amount of papers, two other materials with this uh, behavior and some patient patterns. And if you click on materials from this tab, you can observe in this one. So it's a very detailed information of almost every material. For example, magnetite, I think, website, 
Here is the fluid solenoid where one day is still another particle coating. So it's even mentioned when the silica, when this uh, moieties uh, like uh, fluor moieties and so on. So it's a very nice source that you need just to try to understand how it works. The next one is Parker. Parker can provide information with different, more like organic molecules. So if you put like uh, EGPS, uh, it's data uh, growth factor. Uh, you can find well, a lot of information like uh, smiles, uh, like uh, different uh, coding in different systems. And if you click, for example, for certainty, you can find so many information you need about some compound, like toxicity of certainty, maybe it, because of its toxicity, all of you don't have a lot of this molecule. Uh, literature patterns, biomolecular interactions, biological test results, classification, and so on. So, if you don't know something about some compound, you can ask for chem, then you will get the result. Very short and very in a very scientific way. What next? Uh, RCP, PTP, it's a database uh, for proteins, mostly for proteins, maybe only proteins, and very detailed information about proteins. So if you are working with some proteins on this level, because I don't understand what is here, but if you're working on this level with proteins, you well, you already know about PDP, but still maybe you will change your career in the future and you need this link. Uh, okay, okay, we solved our problem. We found an article which we can trust. We found all information about compounds. We solved our problem, which was contained to the laws of physics, and we are going to proceed. We still can publish some data we obtained in the journal with the part factor two, sadly. And well, we need to proceed to the next part. How to publish? Because well. It's the only way how to achieve a successful research career. You need to publish papers. Uh, not always. It's not a rule now because you can proceed with some working devices like in RD or so in research and development. But in most cases, to get famous, uh, so as scientists will know your name, you need to publish papers, you need to go to conferences, you need to show yourself because if you will walk on the bench doing something, probably you will help people, but people will not know that it's your friend to them. So, how to publish? Uh, it's not me who, for the first time, asking how to publish. It's a lot of clever people. For example, this one, very recent paper, uh, published in a very good journal, Journal of Material Chemistry A. It's an A from B on C, A. The sequence of the draft writing. So, how to proceed with your draft? It's a whole article dedicated to how to make another article. So, knowledge generating knowledge. And the second reference in this article, second reference, is to this article written by George Whitesides. You probably have heard about him. It's, I don't know for now, but Let's assume it was, or maybe now, uh, the number one cited chemist in the world. So, from Harvard University and so on, and it's like icon of chemists. And in year 2004, so like 50 years ago, he published this by science group writing the paper in advanced materials journal. So not every scientist can publish in advanced materials, placing his strong name is a, as a title. And uh, well, advanced materials is the top one journal in material science. And well, it's George White science. And here should be slide 200, I think. Uh, but, but what is a paper? How should you construct an outline and the outline and so on? And well, who am I to say that George Whiteside and this very famous important scientist are wrong? 
quite wide. No one, but I still will say it because both this one and George White side, they are all about the outline and the sequence of draft writer. Why? Because they already failed scientists. They already forget how to be a young scientist without knowledge. And well, we're all here without knowledge. So I want to propose you another sequence of the writing and another hints to the writing and so on. But it will be on the next lecture. <laughs> Let's go for the Questions? Next lecture, uh, next next week, same time, same place. I see. You will get a notification via email. So if you have some questions about that you want to ask me these questions after the lecture, you can write, you can find me, and so on. No? I have a question. A question about uh, scientific databases like focus for website or policy for policy. Uh, what is the reason uh, for this huge list of databases? Why can we have only one database? Oh. Just one research ID or also ID? Or any, any other ideas types, just one order, and we uh, will not, uh, will not um, follow the run with all these ideas. Um, what is it for? Uh, so, so many numbers for one person, uh, one person among, among thousands of researchers. Uh, uh, so, what is the reason for this? Well, I ask this question myself every time, but uh, there are different types of databases. So, uh, if we compare, for example, Scopes and Post, they're very similar, but each of them thinks they are the best. So, why not to create our own database? Say, Rins and create a Rins database. <laughs> so, uh, everyone thinks that the citation index is the best. So, they just can and they create. And about other like Orset or so on, Orset uh, is like uh, independent record of all of your information. So in Schola or search kit, you can put uh, something by your own. You can put everything you want, like I work in Harvard and my science group and so on, and no one will ever prove uh, this and so on. But Orsi automatically collects this data from your papers. So you can edit it. But if you add something wrong, it will be automatically correct. So it's just an uh, independent database for the scientists which can be trusted, let's say. And, uh, well, that's it. Personally, I, want, I also want some one ID, but... And uh, one case of uh, Scopus in Medical Science, you said, and I know it, that it's true that uh, your compiled there are created automatically when you publish your first journal or your first article. Like so this. A few weeks ago, you find this, uh, your account on or something on Scopus of Science, it's kind of weird that someone created my account somewhere on the internet without asking me anything. So that and, and that actually proves that every information about my life, not my academic life, where I work, how old am I, and uh, how many articles I, uh, I, I published. Uh, I don't know if it's according to some kind of uh, uh, law, uh, since uh, it's it's strange that this is speaking up. Yeah, it's crazy, but you, uh, no one, basically no one, can make some editing in your account until you claim it. And to claim it, you need, well, to put your email, you need to fill some information, and after this one, you can uh, edit, but not in direct way. So you cannot edit like printers and so on. You can uh, edit, for example, and additional surnames if you change your surname or if the previous username was written in a different way you can add this information you can uh, merge 
two profiles. For example, when I moved to Itma four years ago, uh, it was created additional profile for me only with articles published in Itma. So there was two profiles for me. And I mainly mention them as focus so to obtain a full information. And you can do so only if you claim most profiles. And you need to put your uh, info email or your work in email because in some domains like if you put your gmail.com, yeah, uh, it will not work. For example, on Google Scholar, you cannot put your personal email. You need to put only the domain or working domain. And the scopus like the same. Sure, of all sizes, if you change your place to work. I mean, we uh, in this use we start with more domain, and we, uh, in, in every uh, research that you can have on time, this is my start more domain. And uh, if in four or five years I move to other universe or other country, I will have to manually change it because my standard of um, domain will be elevated. Since it, uh, at the moment I will end my job here, yeah, so I will have to, and every person will have to change manually the account, or if they don't want to work in science anymore, and they're not scientists anymore, they just perform, but they have, uh, and since they uh, uh, lost their job, their job they, will, they will not be able to look after their accounts since they don't possess. Uh, they yeah. anymore. That's why I use my personal email to log in every system. You're the smart one. Yeah, but, but in, some, in some cases, in some cases, you can ask, for example, uh, I once asked uh, ACS, the American Chemical Society, to change email because from SCAMP to SCAMP info. So it can be done. I don't know how frequently it can be done, but it can be done. Uh, this email you need, uh, when you log in, you put your email and your password. And if this email is not used anymore, it doesn't matter. It's just the word, just the number of uh, amount of letters. You need your email only if you want to retrieve, to retrieve your password. If you forgot your password, or you will receive all the communication if you publish some paper. Uh, using the email, you mention when you will submit your article. When you will submit your article, there will be, like, you put your email, current email, mm -hmm. and it not need to be the same as you used to log in. So, but my advice is the personal email. At least to sign up for the jobs, not for correspondence, but to sign up 